wise men have interpreted dreams and the gods have laughed. H.P. Lovecraft is someone I talk about a lot in my channel and this is because of his relationship with fear and nihilism. Although Lovecraft wasn't gifted in the field of science, he opened our eyes to a wide range of possibilities and brought us an avant-garde perspective to perceive reality. Speaking of perspectives, Lovecraft's perspective was twisted and bizarre. His father was admitted to a mental asylum while his mother dressed him like a girl and was overprotective of him before she went insane and died. These personal experiences of malady and confusion have undoubtedly influenced his stories and the bizarre entities he designed. And besides, most of Lovecraft's gods are less like actual gods and more like abstract concepts in the playground that is his mind. This is why I call him a scribe of madness rather than an actual writer of fiction. This is because in Lovecraft's mind this isn't necessarily fiction. More on that later. But before I get to the gods and monsters that dwell within Lovecraft's psyche, I must talk about Tail Foundry. I made this video because I feel like they misrepresented what Lovecraft's gods are to him and to the reader. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy their videos, yet I will not stand such blasphemy against the great prophet of madness. Now let's talk about Lovecraft's god. Although Lovecraft does not believe in any existing religions, he does talk about a creator deity in his stories. But this almighty creator's nature is a bit stranger than one might expect. According to Lovecraft, Yogsutat is the all-knowing omnipresent god, but Asatoth is the all-powerful creator. So are they both god or is it like the father, the son and the holy spirit? But it is nothing like that. According to Lovecraft, past, present, future are all one in Yogzatat. So Yogzatat is everything, but here's the twist. Yogzatat is the dream of Azathoth. Now this might be a little creepy, but stay with me, okay? Yogzatat is everything and he is the dream of Azathoth. Thus, it is safe to say that everything is a dream of the demon sultan who rests in the midst of the nethermost confusion. So Azathoth is God, right? Azathoth is undoubtedly the one responsible for the birth of Yogzathoth. But the thing is, Yogzathoth is what keeps his father, for a lack of a better term, asleep. So in a sense, Yogzathoth is more powerful than the blind idiot god. And besides, in his story, The Dunwich Horror, Yogzatath is illustrated as a deconstruction of the god of the Bible. But what do they represent? Are they simply imaginary friends or are they abstract reflections of Lovecraft's own mind? Let's see. Outside the ordered universe is that amorphous blight of nethermost confusion which blasphemes and bubbles at the center of all infinity. The boundless demon sultan, Azathoth, whose name no lips dare speak aloud, and who gnaws hungrily in inconceivable, unlighted chambers beyond time and space, amidst the muffled, maddening beating of vile drums, and the thin, monotonous whine of accursed flutes. Okay, so Azathoth is a creature who is always dreaming, and his dream itself is alive. We can draw fascinating parallels to Lovecraft himself and his imagination. When Lovecraft stops doing anything and looks inward into his mind, his imagination is revived. And this imagination is what creates everything within his mind, while being everything itself inside Lovecraft's mind. So Lovecraft sees himself as Azathoth, who slumbers midst the nethermost confusion and therefore his imagination awakens and creates while becoming a magnificent spectacle. But this marvelous menagerie lasts only till Lovecraft awakens and returns back 
to the real world. Now isn't that fascinating? Now did you remember me saying that Lovecraft is a scribe of madness? Let me elaborate on that further. Have you watched The Matrix? I'm going to assume you know because it's all over the place. Either way The Matrix is about Neo who finds out that his life is a complete fabrication and that he was living in a simulation since the day he was born and he is absolutely shocked and finds himself in the mouth of madness. No, but in a serious note, there is absolutely nothing one can do to escape the system. You have the illusion of free will, but your decision will not make a difference in the grand scheme of things. Check out this video from Film Theory, uh, click the icon on, on the right side of the screen. So what does that have to do with Lovecraft you might ask? Perhaps this might answer your question. We have free will, right? We can choose whether to get up or not. We can even decide if we are willing to live or not. But what if I told you it's all an illusion? What if I told you? Everything that ever happened is scripted by a cold, unforgiving, indifferent entity who writes random commands that are beyond the comprehension of any human being. Now you might be wondering who or what this is. What is this God? Before I answer that, let me ask you a question. Think of a face you have never encountered or perhaps think of an animal which does not share any features in common with any creature you know. Chances are you will fail at the aforementioned task. If you didn't, you are a truly eldritch being. So why did I ask this question? It's supposed to demonstrate to you that there are things our imagination cannot create. Thus proving our imagination which is considered a place or a thing which knows which knows no bounds is in fact constricted by the information it has and hasn't. And now let's talk about the rich being I spoke of that governs our existence. You are a person who is made up of organs and those organs are made up of tissue and those tissues are made up of cells which are made up of organelles. So can you tell me the smallest building block which cannot be further broken down? Or let me ask a better question. Think of the shortest distance you can think of. This question leads us down a paradoxical rabbit hole that ends up in the Planck scale. I don't want more misdirections so let's go back to my point. My point is that we broke things apart and named them so they are easier to comprehend. As an example, a galaxy is made up of celestial bodies. Celestial bodies are made up of elements and compounds. These elements and compounds are made out of atoms and scientists have managed to break apart atoms and name parts of it as electrons, protons and neutrons. But what if we put these things back together? What is an infinite three dimensional plane filled with an uncountable number of marvels? But can we name everything that ever existed, that exists and will exist? The past, the present, the future. That is all I can say about it because that is all I can explain. Linguistics cannot convey this complex absurdity. But think hard. You will either go insane or stop caring. This concept is what Lovecraft perceived as the great Yogsutta, the most terrifying creature Lovecraft tried to put into words. Now don't forget to like and subscribe. I mean this video was kind of a mess too. But you know, with time I will get better and make more enjoyable content, okay? So don't forget to like and subscribe and witness my journey to greatness.